all praises to the most. So tonight's topic is called There Shall Be Famine. There Shall Be Famine. So that's tonight's topic. Write that down. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the most High God. Okay, let's open up with the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. 2 Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. And then we're gonna we're gonna touch on some prophecy a little bit. All praises to the Lord. Let's start there. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. Great. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, mm -hmm. which I will put in thy mouth, says the Lord. Read again, verse 1. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, says the Lord. So what we're reading here is the Lord is speaking to Ezra to speak into the ears of our of his people, the 12 tribes of Israel, the words of prophecy, the things that are prophesied to come, the things that are prophesied to happen upon this earth, and we must know about it so we can better prepare ourselves for the evils that's coming. Okay, go ahead. And cause them to be written in paper. Mm -hmm. For they are faithful and true. He says, cause them to be written in paper. The paper is the Bible, the Holy Bible. For they are faithful and true. They are faithful and they will come to pass. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So the Lord is saying, he says, his people have led as a flock to the slaughter. Who are God's people? Get that in Matthew 2, verse 6. Matthew chapter 2, verse 6. He says, my people are led as a flock to the slaughter. The 12 tribes of Israel. Let's prove that. Matthew 2, verse 6. Come on. Let's get that real quick. Matthew 2 and verse 6. Let's see who God's people are that are led as a flock to the slaughter. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. Come on. And thou Bethlehem. In the land of Judah, mm -hmm. are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. That shall rule my people Israel. So God's people is the Israelites. So go back to Second Ezra 15, read verse 10 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 10. Wait. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. So the 12 tribes of Israel are led as a flock to the slaughter. You understand? The slaughter is going into these nations where we are scattered as a nation, where the nations will put us to death, where the nations will destroy us spiritually, mentally, and physically. Go ahead. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. He says, I'm not going to allow them now to dwell in the land of Egypt no more. But the meaning what? The Lord will deliver us out of the land of spiritual Egypt, not the physical Egypt, that we were during the time of the pharaohs, but in new Egypt, the spiritual Egypt. Go ahead. But I will bring them, I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm mm -hmm. and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land. Oh, you see what the Lord is saying? The Lord is saying, because we are led as a flock to the slot among these nations where we are scattered, the Lord says he will not allow us to dwell in the land of Egypt no more. But the Lord must deliver us first. But before the deliverance must take place, there must be evils that must happen upon this earth. Okay? So the Lord says he will smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. Okay, go ahead. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague, and punishment that God will bring upon so now the Lord is saying Egypt shall mourn because of these plagues that the Lord will bring upon spiritual Egypt. You understand? With the place and punishment that the Lord will bring upon it. So let's understand what is Egypt here. Because remember, this is Ezra. This is during the time of Persia. We long left Egypt thousands of years before. You understand? So now the uh, Ezra, the Lord is, is using Ezra to prophesy of the evil that is to come because we're going to go into Egypt Again, get that into John, okay? You know what? Before you get, get Jeff, get Job 11 verse 6. Job 11 verse 6, because the scriptures are double, okay? Job 11 verse 6. Let's understand the Egypt is talking about here. Job chapter 11 verse 6. Let's read that. 
the book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. Come on. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, mm -hmm. that they are double to that which is. You see that the secrets of wisdom is the scriptures, the laws of God, the parables and the dark things. Is this, they are double to that which is rich. You understand? So the scriptures have more than one meaning. They have double meaning. Okay? So now, get that in Deuteronomy 28 now. Deuteronomy 28, read verse 68. So let's understand Egypt here. What is it talking about? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way the whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Read that again, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Stop right there. And the Lord shall bring thee, you Israelites, into Egypt again with ships. So now, the first time when we came into Egypt, we walked. So it's not talking about the physical Egypt that we was in, during the time of Pharaoh, okay? He took about another Egypt, which is spiritual Egypt. Okay, read that part again. And the Lord shall what? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord will bring Israelites into Egypt again with ships. Get that in Exodus 20 verse 2. Exodus 20 verse 2. Let's see what is Egypt here. Come on. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. Mm-hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means the house of bondage. So the Egypt here is talking about spiritual Egypt. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 58 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 58. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Lord is going to bring you into the house of bondage again. This time on cargo slave ships. Okay, now watch this. Get that in Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Okay, because the Egypt that Moses is talking about here is not the Egypt that you just came out of. You understand? Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Come on. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, mm -hmm. which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, mm -hmm. where also our Lord was crucified. You see that? It says, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Remember, it says, we shall be left as a flock to the slaughter. Why? Because the nations will put us to death, spiritually, physically, and mentally. It says, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of this great city, which is Babylon the Great. You understand? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So right now, we are in spiritual Egypt. Okay? Physically, we are in bondage. But we are in spiritual Egypt right now. The same Egypt that the Lord says he will bring plagues upon it. He will bring punishments upon spiritual Egypt. Read again, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, mm -hmm. where also our Lord was crucified. So now we are in spiritual Egypt, which also... We are still in slavery till this day. Why? Because the Most High God used Moses to prophesy what is to come. That's the same thing we read in 2 Ezra 15 and 1 through 2. Now go back to 2 Ezra chapter 15, read verse 11 again. Second book of Ezra chapter 15 verse 11. Mm -hmm. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt place as before and will destroy all the land thereof. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, and I, but I will, this is future prophecy. I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Just like I did it in physical Egypt in the past, when I delivered you, delivered you from the hands of Pharaoh, I'm going to do it again this day in these last days from the hands of your enemies in spiritual Egypt. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? It says, I will smite Egypt with plagues as before. Jump up to verse 5. Watch this. Jump up to verse 5. Let's understand those plagues that the Lord will smite with Egypt as before. Read that. 
Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 5. Read. Behold, says the Lord, Read. I will bring plagues upon the world. I will do what? I will bring plagues upon the world. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he will bring plagues upon the world. The world. So let's talk about the entire planet Earth. Yes, the Lord says he will bring plagues upon the world. You understand? Go ahead. The sword. Mm -hmm, that's war. What was happening in Ukraine, what is still happening in Ukraine with Russia, Ukraine and Russia at war with each other right now. Go ahead. Famine. Famine. So famine is one of the plagues that the Lord will bring upon the earth. Okay, come on. Death and destruction. And the, the war, the famine will cause death, will cause death and destruction upon this earth. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Read on. Come on. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Mm -hmm. And their hateful words are fulfilled. And their, and their hateful words are fulfilled. So what we're reading here, the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to bring faith upon the world. The sword, that is war. You understand? Famine, death, and destruction. So what we're reading here, the Lord says, I'm going to bring this thing. We are already experiencing this. The sword, the war in Russia, which is affecting the economy across the whole earth, especially in Mzan, okay? Famine. We're seeing what's happening around the earth now. The cost of living is too high. The price hikes are high. There's, there's a lot of price, uh, you know, fuel, fuel prices are high. You understand? The food, the food, the cost of food is high. You understand? Transport and all that. Clothes is affecting everything. Import and export. All of those commodities are being affected right now. You understand? Which will spiral into what? Which into a worldwide famine. That's what's coming. We must prepare for that thing. That's what the Lord is telling us. Okay, get that in 2nd Ezra chapter 16. 2nd Ezra 16, read verse 17. Watch this. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 16, verse 17. Come on. Woe is me. Mm -hmm. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Which days? The last days where the Lord will begin to bring plagues upon this earth. Come on. The beginning of sorrows the and great mornings. Of, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings. Come on. The beginning of famine and you great death. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of famine and great death. So Ezra is repeating himself again here. Go ahead. The beginning of wars. Mm -hmm. And the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You see what Ezra is asking? What shall I do when these evils shall come? Because we are the prophets of the Lord this day. We understand what this Bible is saying. What this prophesied of was to come. It's not if or maybe. It's a fact. It's coming. We already seen the signs upon this earth. So the Lord used the prophets to warn us of the things that are coming so we can prepare ourselves and prepare our people. Go ahead. Behold, famine and plague, mm -hmm. tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Are sent as scourges for amendment. So famine, plague, tribulation, you understand? Wars, the sword and all that, they are sent as scourges for amendment. So our people to get right, but our people don't want to get right. You understand? Go ahead. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness. Mm -hmm. Nor be always mindful of the scourges. You see what he's saying? He says, but for all these, the plagues, the famine, the tribulation, the anguish, the death and the destruction, guess what he says? They are not going to stop breaking God's commandments. That goes for our people, our brothers and sisters in the world. That goes for the nations as well. That goes into Esau, the rulers of the earth, and the nations that support him in his rulership. He says, they are still not going to stop sinning against God. Watch this. Give me Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 7. Start of verse 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of war. The wars, the wars, the recent one that is happening is what's happening in, with, with Russia and Ukraine. Okay? The rumors of wars going into what? The rumors that regarding World War Three. Okay, come on. See that ye be not troubled. Mm -hmm. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
He says, this, the Christ is letting us know, listen, these things must take place. These things must happen upon this earth, but the end is not yet. So what is he telling us? Give me that in Acts chapter 14. Watch this. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. The book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Confirming the souls of the disciples. That's what we're doing right now. We're confirming the souls of the disciples with the scriptures to confirm your soul, teaching you so you can understand and prepare yourself, build your faith up. Go ahead. And exhorting them to continue in the faith. You see that? That's why we confirm the souls of the disciples to do what? To exhort them to continue in the faith, to stay in the spirit, you understand? Not bail under pressure. Go ahead. And that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. You see that thing? So that's why it says the end is not yet because all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. What is he talking about? The tribulation. The sorrow. You understand that we read in Second Ezra. So the apostles here, they are saying the same thing that Christ was saying. Okay? So go back. Matthew 24. Read verse 6 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. Right. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Mm -hmm. See that he be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So what he is talking to the disciples. Jump up to verse 1. Verse one. Okay. Read verse 1, Matthew 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. So now he was with the disciples. They showed him the buildings of the temple because the temple was not standing. But what I'm going to show you here is he's talking to the disciples. Those that followed Christ. You remember the disciples, all that came John 8 verse 32. Start of verse 31. John 8 verse 31. Okay, the disciples. Watch this. John 8, start of verse 30. Read verse 30. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. As he spake these words, many believed on him. So as he spake these words, many of the disciples believed on him. Go ahead. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, mm -hmm. if he continue in my way, then are he my disciples indeed. You see that thing? Then said to those Jews that believed on him. So the ones that believed on him, he continued to speak the word of God unto them. If you continue in my word, and you stay true to the faith, you hold on, you don't bail out, then are ye my disciples indeed. Go ahead. Come on. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Watch this. Now go back, because the disciples, they believed, and they continue in the word of Christ that he taught them. Now, now go back. Matthew 24. Read verse 6 one more again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. Right. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that he be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, but now, remember, it says, these things must come to pass. So, they, guess what? We must watch as well as pray, so we can be able to see the signs of the end times before the Lord returns. He says, but the end is not yet. Why? Because we must go through much tribulation to enter into the kingdom. There must be trouble that will be upon us. You understand? And for us to overcome the trouble, to survive to be through the trouble, we must prepare ourselves. We must prepare for the famine because the famine is one of the troubles that are coming, that are already upon us even. Okay, go ahead. For nation shall rise against nation. That's what you are seeing right now. Nations are rising against nation. Okay, come on. And kingdom against kingdom. Mm -hmm. Kingdoms going one against another, right? And there shall be famines mm -hmm. and pestilences and earthquakes in you diverse mean, places. He said, listen, there shall be what? There shall be famines. So when these kingdoms are, are going against each other, these nations are going against each other, it says, while they are doing that, there's going to be famines. In the midst of it all, there's going to be famines. Remember, this is plural. He didn't say a famine. No, famine, meaning plural. There's going to be multiple waves of famines that will hit upon this earth. You understand? And pestilences, diseases, your COVID-19, your monkeypox, HIV, so on and so forth. 
and earthquakes in diverse places, meaning all over the earth, these things will take place. While these things are taking place, nations will also be going at each other. That's what Christ is telling us right here. You understand? So watch this. Read on verse 8 now. Come on. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You see that thing? All these are the beginning of sorrows, meaning all these are the beginning of Jacob's troubles. The same troubles that we read about in 2nd Ezra. Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 18 again. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 18. Read. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. You see that? The beginning of sorrows. That's the same thing that Christ said. Okay, the beginning of sorrows. Plural. Go ahead. The beginning of famine and great death. Mm -hmm. You see that? So the famine will cause great death. That's what he's telling us right there. The beginning of famine and great death. So the famine will result in many of our people dying, many of the population dying because of what? The famine. Whether it's man-made or not. And guess what? It is man-made. The famine that, that famine that is upon it, that, that, that is upon us, the cost of living being too high, and is happening across the earth. It is man-made. Understand it, but it's still a famine nonetheless. And guess what? This particular famine, the Lord said, is going to cause great death. Okay, go ahead. The beginning of wars, and the powers shall stand in fear. Mm -hmm. The powers, meaning the kingdoms of the earth will stand in fear. Read. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when this evil shall come? So guess what? You see what he's saying? The beginning of evils, and he says, Begin, beginning of this evil, what shall I do when these evils will come upon us? Guess what? We will prepare ourselves. That's why Christ says, see that ye be not troubled. So how are we gonna know how we're gonna make sure that we are not troubled? We're gonna go into the scriptures to see how to prepare so that we make sure that we don't find ourselves in that trouble because we did not prepare. That's what Christ is saying. So for us to make sure that we are not troubled, guess what we have to do? We have to search the scriptures. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32. Verse 7. Okay. You know what? Hmm. Give me the rap to Ecclesiasticus. Before you get to Tommy 32, get Ecclesiasticus real quick. Give the rap to Watch this. Sarah chapter 2, verse 10. Read it. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Read. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Come on. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You see what he's saying? So when he says we must look to the generations of old, our forefathers, what they did when the, the evils came upon during their time. What must we do? We must look at what they did and how they trusted the Lord and the Lord delivered them out of all the trouble that came upon them during their time. So we must go back into the past and research the history. And see what they done, what the Lord did, what was the requirement for the Lord to deliver them. Okay, Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 7. Go ahead. Remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. You see what he's saying? Ask thy father, he will show thee. Thy elders, they will tell thee. They're going to show you what happened in the past and they're going to open your spirit to see what you're supposed to do now in order for us to prepare for the sorrow that is to come. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 105, verse 16. Psalms 105, verse 16. Read that. Let's see what happened in the past, what our forefathers did in their time, in the past. Psalms 105, verse 16. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 16. You know what? You know what? Start of this one. Start of this one. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. That's why we bring into the past and we bring into prophecy to show the, deed, the good deeds that the Lord done among his people. Go ahead. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Go ahead. Glory he in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek for the Lord. Read. Seek the Lord and his strength. 
seek his face evermore. Seek his face evermore, meaning go into this Bible. Go into this Bible and understand what the Lord has for us. What we need to do in order for us to prepare. Go ahead. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. The judgment of his mouth. The Lord's mouth is this Bible. Read that again, verse 5. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 5. Remember his marvelous works that he has mm -hmm. done. Read. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Read. O ye seed of Abraham, seven. He children of Jacob is chosen. Your children of Jacob is chosen. So the Lord is saying, listen, we need to remember the marvelous work that the Lord has done among his people. Ye children of Abraham. Ye seed of Abraham, ye seven. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Read verse 16 now. Watch this. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 16. Read. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He did what? Moreover, he called for famine upon the land. Now we're going back to what happened in the past. He, the Lord called for a famine upon the land. The Lord did that thing. The Lord brought famine upon the land. Read. He break the whole staff of bread. You see that thing? He break the whole staff of bread. Meaning what? The people was lacking. Okay, come on. He sent a man before them. Mm -hmm. Even Joseph. Even who? who was sold. Even Joseph. Even Joseph. He sent a man before them. Even Joseph. The them is who? The, the 12 tribes. The patriarchs. The fathers. Agree? He, sent, he was sent over because he was sold by his brethren. But that was the Lord's plan. Read again. Read again. Verse 17, come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. He was sold for a servant, come on. Whose feet they had with fetters. He was laid in iron. Because jo jo Joseph was in prison. Come on, read. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. You see that the word of the Lord tried Joseph when he was in prison. And he was wrongfully put in prison. Okay? But the Lord was trying him. Come on. The king sent and loosed him. Mm -hmm. Even the ruler of the people. And let him go free. Read again verse 20. The book of Psalms chapter 105 verse 20. The king sent and loosed him. Mm -hmm. Even the ruler of the people. And let him go free. So the king, the king is Pharaoh. The king sent and loosed him, meaning was he to be loosed out of prison, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Why? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis, okay? Give me Genesis 41, verse 4. Genesis chapter 41, verse 4. The king, the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Watch this. Genesis chapter 41, verse 4. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. So because the, the Lord, the spirit of the Lord was upon our forefather Joseph. So this man that is speaking now, he is the chief butler who was not put to death, okay? Joseph interpreted the dream and he got his job back. So what we're reading here is what? The, now he's explaining to Pharaoh, there's a young man that will be able to interpret dreams upon the dreams that you've had, Pharaoh. There's a young man and Hebrew which will be able to, uh, to interpret the dream for you. Okay? Read again verse 12. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And there was there with us a young man and Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. We, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, he did interpret. Right. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Meaning the chief baker was hanged. Okay. Go ahead. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Hmm. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his, his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. So now, that's what we just read. Go back to Psalms 105 and 20. We come in back here. Psalms 105 and 20. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 105 and 20. Mm -hmm. 
the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. You see that? Because of what? Because of the problem that Pharaoh had, that his advisors could not fix it. You understand? Go back to Genesis 41, verse 14. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Then Pharaoh sent and called David and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. So now, because now Joseph was, he now was, had to dress like an Egyptian, shave his beard and his hair off and all that. Why? To appear before Pharaoh. Jump up to the sea. Because the reason why Joseph is called to this is because the Egyptian magicians could not be able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Read, jump up to verse 8. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told, told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. You see that none of the magicians could help Pharaoh with his dream. Now jump down to verse 15. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. He says, I've heard that you can understand dreams to interpret them. Go ahead. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Come on. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, in my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. So now Pharaoh is describing the dream to Joseph. Now he's explaining to him the problem set that was troubling his spirit. Read verse 17 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. Come on. And behold, they came up out of the river seven kind, fed flesh and well favored, and they fed in a meadow. So now he's saying, listen, I saw upon the river, I saw seven cows that were what? They were fed. So I, I saw seven fed cows, they were feeding in a meadow. Go ahead. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill favored and lean flesh, such as I never saw in the land of Egypt. For badness. So he says, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. Meaning, this is bad. When the seven skinny cows ate up the seven fat cows, he said, listen, I've never saw anything like this in all of Egypt. I've never seen that. So what is, what is the Lord showing very showing? Listen, there's going to be some trouble that is coming your way. You understand? That's what he's saying right there, because the Lord is the one that's bringing the famine upon the earth. Back then the Lord brought it. Today the Lord is putting the spirit upon Esau to do what? To do this evil that he's doing to fulfill the prophecy. So we need to prepare ourselves. Understand that. Go ahead. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. Mm. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. He said, listen, after the seven skinny cows ate up the seven fat cows, he didn't, he didn't even make a difference. What is he telling him? He's telling him, listen, the, 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 the dream is so grievous unto me that when I saw this, it seemed like, listen, there's trouble coming, but I don't understand what this means. Go ahead. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. So now he's looking at the crops now. You understand? Because now the Lord is showing him two things. You understand? But they're all making reference. They're alluding to the same thing. The famine. You understand? Livestock will be affected, okay? Which is resources. You understand? The crops will be affected, which is another resource. So that's what the Lord is showing Pharaoh, but he doesn't understand what he's saying here. So guess what? But all of this is going into resources. That help us to survive, food and all that. Okay, go ahead. And behold, seven ears, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, mm -hmm. sprang up after them. So now he's saying, listen, I'm seeing, I'm seeing seven ears that came up, and they were full and they were good. 
Now he's saying, listen, I'm seeing others. They came up in the same place. Now they guess what? The good ones are not there no more. Go ahead. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. Hmm. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. Now watch this. You see, this is what he's going into here. He said, listen, the seven, the seven, the seven, um, the one that was blasted with the east wind, they ate up the one that was full and good. But the magicians could not interpret the thing. But I want to show you something, right? This is going into livestock, is going into what is also is going into crops. So these two things that are mentioned here, this goes into three stories. Guess what? Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you something. This day. Remember, we're going to be in spiritual Egypt. Okay? And the Lord says he was going to plague Egypt with, he's going to destroy Egypt with plagues as before. Watch this. Get the book of Deuteronomy 28, right? Deuteronomy 28. Read verse 33. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 33. Mm -hmm. The fruit of thy land and the all fruit thy of labor. Your land. It is the fruit of your land, you Israelites. The fruit of your land, come on. And all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not erupt. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You know what? Go back. Go back to where was it? Go back, go back, go back. Mm, I see something. Go back, Genesis 41. Go back to Genesis 41, read verse 25. Now. now, what Pharaoh just did, he explained the problem to Joseph, right? Now, Joseph is going to interpret the dream, what the dream means. Okay? Watch this. Read that. Genesis 41, 25. We're going to go back to Deuteronomy. I haven't forgotten that. Go back. Genesis 41, read verse 25. Let me take it slow. Okay, come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 25. Great. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. Mm -hmm. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. Go ahead. The seven good kind are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. He says the dream is one, meaning what? It's all making reference to the same thing. Go ahead. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears placed with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. So now he's saying, listen, you've got seven years, okay? The seven years of the good kind and the seven years of the good ears. The dream is one. The ill-favored one and the thin one of the kind, guess what? They represent the seven years of famine. There's going to be good seven years. There's going to be evil seven years that are followed. Read. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Read. But here Pharaoh, his magicians could not interpret this thing. Go ahead. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Read again. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 29. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout the, all the land of Egypt. He says there's going to be seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. So this seven years of plenty, guess what? Remember, seven is also the number of completions. There's going to be seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Hmm. Remember, don't forget the point now. Remember, we're in spiritual Egypt. The Lord is saying, listen, go look at the generations of old. So we can learn something and prepare. So we can understand what the Lord was showing our forefathers back then and what he's showing us this day. So what we're reading here says there's going to be seven years of plenty in throughout all the land of Egypt. Okay, go ahead. And they shall arise after them seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. You see what he's saying? He says all this plenty says then after that, there shall what? Seven years of famine. All the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. What we're reading here, the Lord is saying, the seven years, the people will think that everything is all good. You understand? Mm. Keep going. I don't want to jump the gun. Come on. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. Mm -hmm. 
for it shall be very grievous. It shall be very grievous. So remember, what we read, go back to 2nd Ezra, okay? Go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 16. I don't know if some of you forgot the point already. Let's iterate that thing. 2nd Ezra chapter 16. Read verse 17 again. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 16 verse 17. Read. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. The beginning of famine and great death. Stop right there. The beginning of what? The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of famine and great death. So now, Ezra's here, he, he's actually, he's giving you more details. He says, the beginning of famine and great death, meaning this famine right here will cause great death across the air. We experience, we experience the taste of that during COVID. Because why? There was a plague that was upon this earth. The earth came to a standstill. You understand? So guess what? Many of our people died. You understand? There was a lot of what? Left. People lost jobs. Many of our people died. So there was a plague. There was a famine. Businesses, they were closed down. You understand? And there was a great death. This famine right here that the Lord is saying is man-made and is going to cause great death upon this earth. Just like the, the wrong, okay? Now go back, Genesis 41. Genesis 41 and verse 80 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 80. Right. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. Mm -hmm. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. The famine will consume the land. You see what he's saying? The famine will consume the land. Go ahead. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For it shall be very grievous. It's going to be very grievous because it's going to cause great death. That's what Ezra said. Right? And for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. You see that thing? It says the dream is one and it's doubled unto Pharaoh because it's the thing that is established by the Lord and it will surely come to pass. Guess what? Go back to 2nd Ezra 16. Read verse 2 again. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 15 verse 2. Read. And cause them to be written in paper. Mm -hmm. For they are faithful and true. You see that? For they are faithful and true. That's what we just said here in Genesis 41. It says the thing is established by God and will shortly bring it to pass. The Lord will bring it to pass because it is faithful and it's true. It will come to pass. Don't sleep on this thing. Now, watch this. Now, we read the problem set. We read the interpretation of what the problem means. And now, Joseph will bring solution in the spirit of Christ. Okay? Genesis 41. Read verse 33. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Stop right there. Hold this. Go back to Psalms 105. Go back to Psalms 105. Read verse 21. Read 20 and 21 together. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 20. Mm -hmm. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. To what? To be able he to do what the Lord put in the spirit to do for Pharaoh, but not just for Pharaoh, but for our forefathers that will come up. Go ahead. He made him lord of his house mm -hmm. and ruler of all his substance. You see that? He says he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. Because why? Joseph will offer absolutions, you understand, for his brethren and his father that's coming later on. Go back to Genesis 41. Read verse 33 now. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 33. Really? Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise. Mm -hmm. and set him over the land of Egypt. Come on. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. So now it says, in the seven plenteous years, where you're going to have plenty 
on the land of Egypt is a listen. You must take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt. That's 20%. 20%, you understand, of all the crops, the livestock and all that you've got, you understand, for seven years straight. That requires discipline to do something like that. You understand? So what we're reading here, Joseph is, come, is offering up solutions in the spirit of Christ. Likewise, today, the things that are written, we can learn from this account and do the same things that our forefathers did back then so that why we can be able to overcome the great famine that's coming. Okay, go ahead. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come mm -hmm. and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the city. You see that? He says, let them keep food in the city. It's meaning what? You need to store up these things. Okay, go ahead. And that food shall be for store to the land, to the land against the seven years of famine, mm -hmm. which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. You see that part right there when it says that the land perish not through the famine? Jump back up to the stage again. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. You see what he's saying? The famine will consume the land. What is the Lord saying here? The Lord is letting us know, so listen, yes, it's good to save money, you of which you must, but what he's also showing is that, listen, you have to store food, actual food, because guess what? It says the land will be consumed through the famine. That means there's not going to be places where there will be food available, even if you have money. You see the point? That's what he's saying, right? You men understand that? Yes, sir. That's what he's saying, right? Yes, he said, listen, it says the land will be consumed through the famine. So that means that we need to stock up, store up food. You understand? We need to store up food. That's what he's saying. That's what he's telling us, I think. Store up food. Because it will come a time when you will have money in the bank, but you're not going to be able to buy nothing because there will not be food available. Which means the money will be useless at that point. But the food will be what? Will be a currency that will be that everybody will have. Those that will, those that will have hearkened unto the voice of the Lord their God and done so. That's what we are doing right now. Okay, now watch this. Go back, uh, read verse 36 again. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 36. Mm -hmm. And that the food shall be forestored to the land against the seven years of famine, which right. shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the, through the famine. He says that the land perish not through the famine. Remember, the spiritual Egypt is talking about primarily making reference to Babylon the Great. And Babylon the Great has all the riches. Where do they get the riches from? The continent of Africa. You understand? They get the continent. They get the riches from the continent. You understand? Now watch this. Now give me the book. Hmm. He says we must store up and stock up. Remember, where was Joseph? Joseph was in Egypt. Okay? The continent of Africa at this time. You understand? And now we are in spiritual Egypt. Okay, and America, Europe, China, and all that, they only, the only reason why they are able to survive is because of what? Is because of this continent right here, the so-called African continent. Okay, now, watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy, okay? Give me Deuteronomy because, you know what? Go back to Psalms 105. Read Psalms 105 verse 23. The book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So now, guess what? The land of Ham is what? Is the richest continent on the planet Earth. You understand? Which belongs to us anyway. You understand? So now, you, do you think the white man, the so-called white man, he doesn't know that? Of course they know that because they read our book. That's why they exploiting this continent for all the resources that they got, you understand, to store up and stock up riches where they are. Understand it? You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Daniel, okay? 
Değil mi Daniel chapter 11? Evet. Daniel chapter 11. Read verse Daniel chapter 11 and verse 23. Watch this. The book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 23. Mm -hmm. And after the league made with him he shall work deceitfully. The league is still going into the Berlin Conference. The League of Nations, the Berlin Conference of 1884 when they divided Africa. You understand? That scramble for Africa, it goes into that as well. Go ahead. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Because they are a small nation and they, they only started now in 1736. Okay, come on. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. The fattest places of the province is talking about the continent of Africa. This is the fattest places of the province. Go ahead. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done. Meaning what? He's going to conquer even more. Wherever the Israel is scattered, they're going to go there. But the main place what they're going to be there for a long time is the continent, including the land of Israel, because it's part of the continent. Okay, come on. No, his father's fathers. Mm -hmm. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil right. and riches. Yay. See that? He's going to spoil and he's going to spoil and take the riches. Come on. Yea, he shall forecast his devices against the stronghold, even for a time. So the stronghold is talking about what? Our cities, Jerusalem and the continent. Okay, jump down to verse 27. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 27. And both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. That's the European nation, the League of Nations, the United Nations, that's them. Both of these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. Go ahead. And they shall speak lies at one table. Because they're going to have a round table to discuss how to overthrow and destroy us and to exploit all our resources and leave us in an impoverished state. Go ahead. But it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Because their end is coming. That's why Jacob is rising up right now. Come on. Then shall he return unto his land with great riches. You see that? So it says this white man and his European allies and the rest of his nation, it says they will return to, he's going to return to his own land with great riches. Where are they getting the riches from? From the continent of Africa. Okay, come on. And his heart shall be against the Holy Covenant. You see that? His, his mind will be against the Holy Covenant. The Holy Covenant talk about this Bible, the covenant that the Lord made with us in the Old and the New Testament. Go ahead. And he shall do exploits. Mm. and return to his own land. He will exploit the continent, the, the land for the resources, and he's exploit the people, you understand, and leave the people in, in an impoverished state, and return to his own land. America, Europe, you understand? Now the Chinese have actually have joined in now, you understand, to steal the Arabs also from the continent. The point is, what I'm showing you is, The reason why is what we're reading here, where Joseph was, was in the land of Egypt, where there was plenty. Now we're in spiritual Egypt. How will spiritual Egypt, which is America, Babylon, the Great, how are they going to get the riches that Egypt had during the time of Joseph? Is because the white man will come to the continent and exploit it for resources. You understand? And take those riches back to his own land. Understand that. Now, Give me the book of Deuteronomy now. Give Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read verse 33. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 33. Go ahead. The, the fruit of thy land and all mm -hmm. thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not erupt and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So now this goes into the fruit of that's the resource. That's the exploit that we will do for the resources upon the land. That goes into the minerals, you understand, gold, diamond, platinum, and so on and so forth. Oil is the shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. They're going to eat up their resources and take them back to their own land so they can be rich, that they can be the richest nation on earth. That's why America is so rich because of what they are doing, they're doing. They've done exploits upon the continent. They are still doing exploits today to live us in an impoverished state. And he's sharing those riches with the nations that support him the allied countries, okay? And we shall be only oppressed 
and Christ always, we're going to be left in an impoverished state. Go ahead. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. We're going to be mad. You understand? Because we will understand what's going on. Watch this. Jump down. Read verse 38 now. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 38. Read. Right. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in. For the locusts shall consume it. You see that the locusts that will consume it is talking about the white man and his ally, his European friends and allies. He says, What? You're going to get must, must seed out into the field. Where will we get the must seed? The seed is talking about, we will have crops. But guess what? It's going to be a man made famine that will come upon the land. Who's going to create that famine? The so called white man, America and Europe. They will create a man made famine. And it's going to cause great death. You understand? So that's why you will carry much seed out into the sea. Where is the seed coming from? We own the seed. But they will come. We will have plenty. But they will come and exploit us of the seed that we will have. That goes into the resources. Which is what Joseph was talking up. You understand? Go ahead. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them. But shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. The worm goes back into the white man. It will take the resources, you understand, to cause a man-made famine. Go ahead. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, mm -hmm. for thine olives shall cast its fruit. Because who will make us, who will make, who will make sure that that takes place? The white man. Because he'll be the one, okay, now it's time. You know, gather the great, gather the olives from the plant, from the olive plant. That's what he would do. Why? Because he wanna do something with it. He wanna store it up. He wanna stock it up. You understand? And he wanna sell it back to the nation. He wants everybody when they want those the natural resources, the basic necessities. We must all go to them. That's what the Lord is saying. That's why Bill Gates is going around buying up farms. That's what he's doing. Look what's happening in Sanin today. What's happening in Sanin? What's happening right now is that. The white man has a farm over there, multiple farms, and our foremothers and forefathers that are in Zanin today, guess what he's doing? He's destroying their houses in there, which he found on that farm, and that farm he sold it. So now he's, he wants, he's raising, he's, he's making them pay rent on the farm that he found them on. I just saw this in the news tonight. You understand? And guess what he's doing? He's forcing them out of the farm. That they've been there way before he came. It's a man-made famine. Okay. Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 3, verse 43. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. You know what? Read verse 42. Read verse 42. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 42. Mm -hmm. All thy trees and the fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. You see what he's saying? He says, all thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. That goes into the white man. The trees and the fruit of our land, yeah, that goes into mineral resources and what else? Fruits and veggies, crops, seeds and all that. You understand? Read verse 49. Watch this. No, no. Um, read verse 51. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 51. Come on. And he shall eat of the fruit of thy cattle. Remember, what Moses is what Moses is prophesying here, these are the things that will happen in what? In spiritual Egypt. What Moses is explaining here is this prophesying about the things that will happen in spiritual Egypt. What America will do to exploit the richest continent on earth to make sure that every the world they make sure that we starve, because that's where we are primarily, and the rest of where Israel is getting. You understand? So he's going to make sure that wherever we are, we start because America controls the economy of the earth. You understand? Just like Pharaoh did back then. Understand what's going on here, brothers. Okay? Read that again, verse 51. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 51. Right. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cat mm -hmm. and the fruit of thy land until that? thou be destroyed. The fruit of your cat. Remember, what Pharaoh saw in the dream he said, listen, I saw fat cows, fat, seven fat cows and seven 
skinny cows. The seven skinny cows ate up the seven fat calves. So that goes into, that livestock, that's exactly what the white man would do in these last days. You understand? He will take the livestock, he will control the meat, import and export of all meat. You understand? Import and export of all crops. You understand? Water and all that. Go ahead. Until thou be destroyed. Which that? also... Hold on. It says, until we are destroyed. Remember it says, the famine will cause great death. Read that again, verse 51. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 51. Mm -hmm. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land right. until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil. He says he's not going to leave corn, he's not going to leave wine, he's not going to leave oil or the increase of our, of our kind. So, meaning he's going to eat up the resources to create a what a man made famine, to cause great death upon this earth. Go ahead. Or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until mm -hmm. he have destroyed thee. You see that? So, guess what? What I'm showing you is the, the dream that Pharaoh had, that Joseph was interpreting, that's exactly how the white man will make sure that he stock up and stores up all the resources. Guess what we must do? We have to now go through the scriptures, search through the to show what the to see what the Lord is showing us. So we do what we do what our forefather Joseph did to stock up. You understand? And to take those food and store them in different places in the country, wherever we are, to make sure that we have food when the famine hits, when everybody wanna feel the pinch for real, for real. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. Watch this. Now read verse 43 because I saw I saw a video on ENCA when the IMF was warning South Africa of the, the lack of economic growth in, in South Africa because what? South Africa gets money from the in, in International Monetary Fund, the IMF. You understand? Watch this. Read verse 43. Because Ramaphosa just went for a couple of billions now. He went to borrow a couple of billions. You understand? For, for the country to boost the economy. Watch this. Read verse 43. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. Mm -hmm. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and that thou shalt come down man. very low. Primarily, the white man will get up above us very high, together with the nations that support him. We're going to come down very low. But the Lord says, see that ye be not troubled. Why? Because we know what the scripture says. We know what our forefathers did in the past to make sure to protect themselves against the famine. Read. Right? He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. You see that? That's why now the IMF, they are able to borrow South Africa money, as an example. I'm just using South Africa because that's where we are. That's where we are scattered. Okay, come on. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. He's going to be the head, and we shall be the tail. And guess what? That all goes back to the, the beginning of sorrows, the famine, and great death that we read about in Second Ezra. He says they are faithful and they are true. These things will take place. They are going to happen. You understand? So now what's happening here is if you have, if, if you control the food, you control the land. Because remember, they will have access to the land. They will have owned the land. They will own the resources upon the land. Not only that, the crops, the livestock, and all that. So which means that they are going to be able to control the currency. The value of your car, they'll control that. So during the famine, when it hits, guess what? You already think you see the rent is real, the rent is struggling. Why? Hold on. Give me the book of Revelation 6, the black horse. Watch this. Revelation 6. Okay. Revelation chapter 6, read verse 5. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And when he had opened the said the third seal. I had the I had the third beast say, "Come and see," and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. A black and he horse. that sat on, Hold on this black horse represents the dark nation, the dark races, which is us, the Israelites. Okay, go ahead. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. So now you've got this man sitting and riding this black horse. Who's this man riding the black horse? The white man. This white man is riding upon the black, meaning what? 
He has conquered the dark nation. He took their land, their resources. He's leaving them in an impoverished state, which means he has the power to create a man-made famine which will affect the whole planet Earth, especially us, because there's the, we're multiplying too many. We are too many. And we're going to eat up the resources. That's what they say. You understand? He had a pair of balances in his hand. Watch this, go ahead. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny. A measure. So now they're doing measurements. That goes into currency. You understand? The Bretton Woods system. Read. And three measures of barley for a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny. Go ahead. And see thou had not the oil and the wine. You see that he says, make sure that you had not the oil and the wine. The oil goes, because remember, American currency, the dollar, the reason why it's strong is because why? It's because of oil. That's why, I'm, uh, that's why you see Nigeria is, is destroyed like this, because of what? America wants the oil in Nigeria. You understand? That's why you see the war that, the war that we saw in Afghanistan and Iraq because of that oil and all that during the time of George, George W. Bush. Yeah, because of the oil. You understand? Look at the Saudi prince and all that. America is, 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 is showering them with gifts and money because of the oil. Because why? America's dollar depends on them. That's why now they're exploring Bitcoin and digital currency. You understand? Read that again, verse 6. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four peace say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou had not the oil and the wine. You notice that it says a measure of wheat for a penny. Wheat, one penny. Three measures of barley for a penny. You see, the balances are unjust, unjust balances. Why? That's what ESO does. That's why the Britain who system was created to make sure that they dictate your the value of your rent, the value of your currency. For instance, the rent against the dollar. The rent is weak. Who's doing that? This white man sitting upon this black horse, which represents us. You understand? Watch this. Read verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter no, no, no. 6, verse 8. Read, read verse 7. Read verse 7. I'm showing you how the famine will take place in spiritual Egypt. It's going to be man-made. So when you see on the news, when they, when they see economists, the white men talking about, no, oh, the government is the, they know exactly what's going on. They know they are the ones that are doing this. Read verse 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 7. Come on. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I mm -hmm. heard the voice of the fourth piece say, come and see. Come on. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. A pale horse. That goes into the white man also. Go ahead. And his name that sat on him was death. You see that thing? This pale horse, the man that sat upon this pale horse was death. You understand? Go ahead. And hell followed with him. You see that thing? Death and hell followed after this man. Because wherever the white man goes to conquer and destroy countries, he leaves the nations in a death and a hellish state. Captivity. You understand? Impoverished. Read. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part of the earth is America. The fourth part of the earth is the Americans. Write that down. Go ahead. To kill with the sword. You see that thing? So the white man's agenda is to kill through war. That's the sword. You understand? Go ahead. And with hunger. That's it right there. Famine. Famine and great death. To kill with sword and with Hunger. Read. And with death. You see that? Sword, hunger, death. Go ahead. And with the beast of the earth. That zoonosis, when they're splicing animal DNA to create these super viruses, that they are now destroying the whole earth. That's what we're reading here. You understand? All of these will take place when this man creates this man made famine upon this earth. Our job, brothers, is to prepare for that famine. Is to stock up, to buy the crop, the, you know, the non-perishable. You understand? Every month we must be doing that because why? When the famine really hits this earth, guess what? We need to be prepared. We need to be ready. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, now, 
I'm going to show you something. I was still dealing with the famine and the how it is created because the white man is the one that's doing it. You understand? He's creating man-made famines upon this earth. Give me that in a buckle, okay? Because what we read, death and hell followed our time. Watch this. Get that in a buckle. A buckle two. Habakkuk 2, start at verse, let's see. Habakkuk chapter 2, read verse, verse 4. Habakkuk 2, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Talk about Esau. He says his soul that is lifted up in him is not upright. Go ahead. But the just shall live by his faith. The just will, will live by faith. We are the just. We keep the commandments. We are we, we keep the commandments under in the faith of Christ. We will live by faith. Go ahead. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. He says, This white man he transgresseth by wine. Wine goes into life. Get that in Micah 2. Micah 2, verse 11. He says he transgresses by wine, meaning lie. You understand? Man made famine. And he act like you don't know what's going on. Read that. Micah 2 verse 11. The book of Micah, chapter 2 verse 11. Read. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood to do lie, mm -hmm. say, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet of, his, of this people. No, notice. He says, if a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie. So the spirit of falsehood and lies, guess what? Is making reference to the wine, the strong drink, that lies. He says, this white man, he sins through his lies, through the media. He's the one that is the one, he's the, he, that's why he says, he shall even be the prophet of these people, the economists, the advisors. Look at Escom with the blackouts. You understand? The CEO who has not, he does not have any clue about electricity and power generation, but he's the CEO of Escom. Guess what? Transgressing by lies. But they are the same ones that are telling the world what's going on. And it's all through lies. It's all lies to keep us asleep. And they, at least they know what's going on. So guess what? We are the illuminated ones. We go into the scriptures to see what the, our enemies are playing. And guess what? We prepare ourselves for that day. Understand it. So go back to Habakkuk. To read verse, four, read verse 5 again. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 5. Mm-hmm. Yea, also, because he transgresses by wine. By lies. He, really? is, he is a proud man. They are a very proud nation. Come on. Neither keepeth at home. You see that? That's why it says death and hell followed after him. Why? Because he doesn't keep at home. He's in everybody's land, exploiting them. You understand? Destroying those nations and the countries and stealing continents. Right? Who enlarges his desire as hell. You see that? He enlarges his desire as hell because he's covetous. Everything that he desires, he enlarges it as hell because he leaves those countries impoverished and destroyed. Right? And is as death. You see that? And is as death. That's why it says hell and death followed after him. You understand? Go ahead. And cannot be satisfied. He cannot be satisfied. The Lord is telling us that this so-called white man they are not satisfied. Go ahead. They are greedy. That's what they're saying. Wait. But gathereth unto him all nations, mm -hmm. and heapeth unto him all people. You see that he says, come to America, come to Europe, come to Canada, and so on and so forth. After they what? After they destroyed the nations that they exploited, particularly this continent. You understand? Because the world cannot survive without this continent. Understand that thing. They know how fatal this continent is when you read Genesis, the second chapter. Now watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 11. Okay. No, 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 no. Before you get there, give me the book of Revelation. Because watch this. Revelation chapter 8. Revelation 18. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation 18 and verse... Yeah? Verse 8. Revelation 18 and verse... Eight. You know what? Start verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 3. You know what? Start verse 2. Start verse 2. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, 
saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Babylon the great is fallen, is the greatest city on earth. Great is fallen and is become the habitation of devil mm. and the hold of every, of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bait. Because when it's destroyed, guess what? The only thing that will be able to change out that place is what? Is all these wild, is all these foul and wild spirits. These wild animals there, they're going to be there. If you watch that movie, that movie uh, Will Smith, the I Am Legend, yeah, that's what he's talking about. Okay, where everybody was gone, it was just lizards and all that stuff. You know? Yeah, huh? he's talking about that. Go ahead. For all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of a fornication. Read. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. The kings of the earth is the nations that support America, the allied countries with America. Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You see that thing? Is that the merchants, meaning the big corporations. Big corporations is not talking about, let's say, um, not like the Ford Motor Company or Apple. No, 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 no. A country is a corporation. America is the greatest corporation on earth. Europe, you understand, is also on the same level somewhat. You understand? These are great corporations, these countries. Countries are businesses. That's what you need to understand. Is that the merchants of the earth are worth rich through the abundance of a delicacy. Where is America getting all these riches from? The continent. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 28. You understand? That's what we read in Revelation 6. Okay? Now, all of these riches, they're going to have all these. They guess what? They will have control of all the basic needs that the world needs. The elite will have access to all these. Guess what? As the illuminated ones, we need to understand what this Bible is saying and prepare ourselves accordingly because we know what's coming. That's why Christ says, see that you be not troubled. Why? Because we understand what the scriptures is saying and we're preparing ourselves accordingly. That's what we need in right there. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Acts 11, 27. Because remember, our forefathers, they stocked up. What our, what our forefather Joseph did during the time of Egypt, he stocked up. Let's go back to Genesis 41 before we go to Acts. Genesis chapter 41. Let's read that again. Genesis 41 and verse... Genesis 41. Read verse 33 again. Read, read verse 34. Read verse 33. The book of Genesis, chapter 41, verse 34. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. When there's plenty, because you see what... Not his, what, what you see, the, with this white man, he reads the Bible. So when it was plenty, they were stocking up. Guess what? America makes sure that they are here during the Berlin Conference, the European nations. They came here to scramble the continent, you understand, and to steal as much as they possibly can. Now the continent, we are poor, but we are sitting on the richest continent on earth. So during the time when it's plenty, that's when they were stealing. Guess what? During the time when it was plenty, that's when Joseph advised Pharaoh to do what? To stock up. You see that? Look, I'm, one, I'm showing you the parallels here. Okay, go ahead. And let them gather all the food of those years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep the food in the city. You see that? Let them keep food in the city. That's why when you read Daniel, it says he will do many exploits it will take the spoils back to his own land. That's why America is the richest corporation on earth because of that. Read. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, mm -hmm. which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. You see that, that the land perish not through the famine. So our forefather Joseph, he came up with a plan in the spirit of Christ. And the Lord blessed him on that on, on that one. Now, watch this. So the same thing that our forefathers did back then, guess what? Our forefathers did during the time of the Acts of the Apostles. Get that in Acts 11, verse 27. The book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And in those days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Right? And there stood up one of them named Agabus, 
and signified by the Spirit that there should be great death throughout all the world. You see that? That there's going to be a great death throughout all the world. Meaning a great famine is going to plague the earth. What did they do? Go ahead. Which came to pass in the days of Claud Claudius Caesar. It came, so the, the, the famine came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Watch this. Go ahead. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelled in Judea. You see what they did? So the disciples, as every man according to his ability, they determined to send relief. That's food. You understand? That was stored up. Relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. They are brothers. So that's the same thing that we must do this day. Stocking up. Buying up non-perishables. Toiletries and food and all that. Okay, go ahead. Which also they did. And sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Because trust the men that was trusted to do this thing. Now, so given that our forefathers did this during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, we are living in the act, the time of the Acts of the Apostles right now. Guess what? This, this is an example that we should follow. Just like our forefathers, just like the example that we just, we just read about during the time of Joseph in Egypt, that's the same thing today. We must do the same thing. While living in the Acts of the Apostles, they also were following what? The examples of our forefathers, Joseph and so forth. Understand that? Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Genesis 41 verse 54 because the famine is going to take place and it's going to be very grievous. We must understand that. Now, because the famine is going to be very grievous upon this earth, we need to stock up. Watch this. Get Genesis 41 now. Genesis 41. Read verse 54. The book of Genesis chapter 41 verse 54. And the seven years of death began, began, began to come, according as Joseph had said. Mm -hmm. And the death was in all the land, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. So bread there. You see that? But in all the land of Egypt there was bread. Why? Because Joseph had a plan. He put the plan in motion, and the plan was success because the Lord was what? The Lord was with our forefather Joseph. Likewise, we must do the same this day. You understand? Go ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, mm. the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he says to you, do. Now stop right there. You see this part right there? He says, When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Because why? Joseph had a plan. You understand? When you look at our people today, who are they crying to? They are crying to the government. Our people are frustrated. Why? Because they don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. So now, instead of listening to what the Bible says, because the Bible has the solution, they don't want to listen to what the prophet has to say in the spirit of Christ. So instead, they cry to the government for help. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. And the famine was was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. Mm. And the famine works so in the land of Egypt. So now, you see that is that the famine works, works so in the land of Egypt. The point, what I'm showing you is the famine was over all the face of the earth, which is what's going to happen. It's going to be very grievous. And Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine was so in the land of Egypt. So think about it like this, right? During the time of Egypt, they didn't know why the people was able to come to Joseph because they had, they had some money to buy food from Joseph, right? They had money to buy food. They didn't have food, but they were able to go and buy, buy from Joseph. We, in the, we, we are in captivity right now, right? And we are in spiritual Egypt. We are, have to depend on ourselves. Not on Esau. Esau, the devil, the Bible speaks of, guess what? He's only going to help his own. Understand that. So that means that if you have money and you want to go buy food from them, one, you might not get it. Two, 
it will be so expensive that you're not gonna your money will be wet will be will be worthless when you go and use your money to buy. So the solution that the Lord is giving us then is this store food in the various places where you are. That's the solution the Lord is giving. Store up food. Because now you notice, I'm going to show you some videos now. I'm going to show you that, yes, the food prices are going up and the petrol and all that stuff. But guess what? The salaries are not going up. So that means it will get to a point where you, the value of the rent will be so low that you're not going to, you, you'll basically buy next to nothing with that money. That's the point. But if we stock up food, guess what? That's the solution the Lord is giving. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, yes, sir. give me, let me play the, let me play the video. Let me play this, these videos now. Watch this. Now, I'm going to show you that our people, they are frustrated. And what happened in 2021? Guess what? I mean, it caused a lot of issues in the country. The whole earth was got windows. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. Brother, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. In the heart of a township on the outskirts of Johannesburg, people seized and stole at will, as they have done for the past few days. And there is little or no fear of the authorities here. Turmoil and anarchy have gripped some of South Africa's largest cities, and the government has had to respond with armed police and members of the military. But the looters and the rioters are fleet of foot, and rubber bullets do not seem to scare them. We follow the authorities down a local thoroughfare, but they only managed to catch one man before they handed the area back to the troublemakers. Later, we found the South African police minister, Becky Kelly, doing a walkabout through the rubble but he didn't want to answer our questions. Minister, do you have the situation here under control? Do you have the situation here under control? Because it doesn't look like it. The unrest began after the country's former president, Jacob Zuma, was arrested. But a series of protests have grown into something far more troubling. Here on an estate near Durban, residents filled their arms with televisions, microwaves and bikes plundered from a distribution center. In Johannesburg, shops and businesses have been targeted or destroyed despite the efforts of the police. Although they caught up with looters at this supermarket as they battled to escape through the back. In a place called Tembisa, the shops and the post office had been set alight. All of the shops in this, uh, in this plaza have been looted, but they're also destroying them as well, setting fire, individual shops. There must, have, there must be half a dozen now gone up in flames, but they're still here picking through the ruins. You can hear them in this shop. You can see them up on the counter. Uh, they don't like being filmed. I think we should go. A fight back of sorts has begun to emerge as community groups seek to save the businesses that provide them with jobs. But they can't count on the authorities, and the looters feel no sense of self-restraint. John Sparks, Sky News in Johannesburg. So now, what you just saw now is what we all saw last year, 2021, the looting, because the people were frustrated and hungry and all that. And remember, they looted government buildings, they looted businesses that are secured and all that. They were able to destroy, set, set, set businesses on fire, supermarkets and all that, right? And businesses lost a lot of money, people lost jobs. Now think about that, right? Hmm. If they are able to do that to businesses and all that, what about invading people's houses? You think they're not going to do that? 
If the people can do that to businesses that are like security, they've got cameras, they've got all this, they've got armed, armed security and all that, you think they're not going to be able to do? What about the, the going to people's houses? You think that's not going to happen? Of course that's going to take place. You have to think about that thing. That's going to take place. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Second Ezra, okay? Second Ezra chapter 15. Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 15. Read verse 16. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For the sword and their destruction draweth none. Uh -huh. Verse 16, verse 16. Apology said. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For there shall be sedition among, among men. That's what you just saw. Sedition among men. Because what you just saw, guess what they did? You see what they did? The government had to deploy the military to come and calm the situation down. Because our people was what? It was hungry. You understand? Right? And invading one another. Go ahead. That, let's guess what? It's a sedition among men invading one another. That part didn't take place. They invaded the what? The businesses. So that's level one. They invade businesses and government buildings. Go ahead. They shall not regard their kings, no prince. They're not going to care about the politicians. They're not going to care about the police. They're not going to care about the president. They're not going to care about what the media say about what they're doing. Go ahead. And the cause of their actions shall stand in their power. Because they continue. Even when the police were shooting and all that, rubber bullets and all, they still continue to loot. Okay? Watch this. Read verse 18 now. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Stop right there. Because of the pride of our people, is that the cities will be troubled. Look at the whole country was troubled because of this thing. So that's level one, invading businesses and government buildings and all that. You understand? Despite what the government said, they didn't give a damn. Watch the next step. These are the next stages that will take place. Understand? It's coming. Right. And the houses shall be destroyed. You see that? And men shall. Hold on. Wait, wait. This hasn't taken place yet. Is it? And what? The houses shall be destroyed. Meaning they are going to invade people's houses. Ray, go ahead. And men shall be afraid. Men will be afraid because of that thing. Go ahead, watch this now. Verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. You see that? Now this goes into our neighbors now. Your brother that look like you, guess what he will do? Come on. But shall destroy their houses with the sword. You see that thing? They're going to destroy their houses with the sword. Guns. Look at what's happening with the tablet. You see what's happening in the country now? Where they say they found over 100 AK-47 in some jungle somewhere. Prepared to do what? To be shooting people. Now you've got black men going into taverns and shooting kids and shooting everybody in the tavern. Now they've got shootings in Soweto. You had um, shootings in Peter Marisberg. You had shootings in Kakeho. You understand? So what's going on? Remember, they started in the what? They started in businesses, in business parks. You understand? In malls. Now they are invading the Kasi economy. Now they they are invading the shavings and bars and all that in the Kasi. What's next? The houses. You men see this? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And spoil their goods. You see that? They're gonna spoil their goods. That's what's coming next. They're going to take the people, the, the things that people own. They are good. Go ahead. Because of the lack of bread. That's it right there. Because of the lack of bread. Because what? There'll be famine. There's going to be famine. They're going to use the sword to spoil the people's food because of lack of bread. You understand? Famine. We're already still feeling the pinch right now. Go ahead. And for great tribulation. Because of great tribulation. Because of what? The troubles that will come upon this earth. That is what we need in the day. You understand? So you haven't seen anything yet. It's coming. 
Our job is to prepare. Get that in Second Ezra, chapter sixteen, verse seventeen. Okay. Second book of Ezra, chapter sixteen, verse seventeen. Read. For they shall be in every place, and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Guess what? Remember, those that fear the Lord, that's us, keeping God's commandments. Guess what? They're also going to in invade us that keep the, God, the laws of God. This is 2-4. This goes into the nation persecuting us and our people doing what? Persecuting us and delivering us up to the authority, to the authorities to be persecuted. You understand? Because of what? Keeping God's commandment and believing on the Messiah. Go ahead. They shall be like madmen. That's what you saw with the looting. You see how crazy they look? How crazy our people was acting? On this day, it's going to be worse. Read. Sparing none. They're not going to care. They're not going to spare no one. Read. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the law. They're going to spoil and destroy those that fear the law. Read. For they shall waste and take away their goods. You see that thing? They're going to waste and take away their goods. They're going to invade people's houses. Go ahead. And cast them out of their houses. You see what the Bible is saying? And cast them out of their houses. This right here is what's coming. But here's what the Lord said. Read. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. Mm. And they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Because those are going to be the trials that we have to go through. Those are the trials that we must, we must go through them. These are trials that are designed to what? For us to show ourselves worthy of the kingdom of heaven that shall be established on this earth. Read. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, mm. but I will deliver you from the same. So he's saying he's going to deliver us from the troubles, but he said these troubles are going to take place. We are going to go through it. We are going to experience them. You understand? But guess what? The Lord says we are going to, he's going to deliver us from these troubles. Read. Be ye not afraid, mm -hmm. neither doubt, for God is your guide. The Lord is the one that will guide us now, because we need to open the scriptures to read what the scriptures are saying, so we can act accordingly. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying to us right here. Now, let me play the next video. Because what you need to understand is that, yes, the looting, it caused a lot of, it, it caused an economic um, downhill in the country. You understand? Businesses closed down. Businesses lost money. Businesses lost, um, you know, um, their, their, their advantage in the market and so forth. And many of our people, we had no places to go to buy food that was sold in bulk and all that. Because why? It was looted, set on fire and destroyed. Okay. Now, but watch this. Check in with the money desk. Let's hear my here's, here's what um, our people are doing now. Because of what's going on, our people are now, they can see something going on, but they don't know how to explain. Okay, but watch this. Let's check in with the money desk. Rapiwa Madzena is joining us once more. And Rapiwa, I mean, times are tight. Like that's the most obvious thing in the world. A lot of people, even those who would normally be fairly comfortable, are now having to look at what items to cut back on where they can trim mm -hmm. their budget, am I right? Right, and some of us who've never even had to budget are having to learn so that we are making it through the month, right, Sally? But that is one of the big concerns currently where South Africans are starting to feel the pinch as fuel and food prices rise. Many say they've started cutting back while others have resorted to bulk buying. Is that the best option now? Well, ENCA's Ngobile Madlala has that story. The cost of living is going up and experts say with the petrol prices expected to go up soon, it won't be coming down anytime soon and South Africans are starting to cut back on their spending. Everything is going up except the salaries. Mm. I just I asked uh, my employer to work from home. You try and find something that you can start from home like a small business, maybe a vendor or something. Don't be fooled by big red stickers that are saying it's a promotion. When in fact, sometimes it's not really a promotion. Now, that's a good point that she's making. She says, don't be fooled by these big red stickers making you think that there's a sale going on. 
Hmm. Watch this. Hold this. Give me second Ezra 15. Okay, we're coming back to this video. Second Ezra chapter 16. Second Ezra 16. Read verse 21. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 21. Come on. Behold, visuals shall be so good, cheap upon the earth. You see that? It says, visuals, meaning food, shall be so good, cheap upon the earth, meaning food are going to be cheap. I mean, it's going to look like there's a sale. When you go to uh, ShopRite, pick and pay, you think there's a sale going on. Kitty combo, get this and that. You think that's cheap. No. Go ahead, watch this. That they shall think themselves to be in good case. You're going to think everything is all good. Can be slow. Watch this. Go ahead. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth. You see what he said? He says, what you think is the same is not. But the Lord is telling me, he says, these are indeed evils that will come upon the earth. Go ahead. Sword, mm -hmm. famine, and great you confusion. You see that sword? Famine and great confusion. Our people are confused. What's going on? Why is there blackout? Why is the food going up? Why is the, uh, the, the fuel prices going up? The food is expensive. So on and so forth. That's the confusion. So on, because there's a war going on. Now it's causing famine. And now the people are confused. Watch this. Go ahead. Sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. You see that? Many of our people that dwell upon the earth, is they're going to die through famine. Remember, it said famine and great death. Okay, go ahead. And the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Meaning the war. War, the nation going against each other, fighting each other for what? Resources. You understand? That's what's coming. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? Let's play on. So you buy for your long term to have your long life stuff. And then as the months go, you're able to just top up on the essential stuff that you really need. And that's what stretches your end. You see what she's doing now? She's talking up. You understand? While the necessities are taking the chop, entertainment seems to still be holding up. Some restaurants and theaters say South Africans are still out and about. Especially here in Joburg, Santon. Uh, we've seen a large increase of clients buying food, buying drinks. The one thing that you want to do and to get away from it all is find the magic somewhere. In theatre, that's where the magic is. Mm. Debt counsellors say stats show that South Africans are becoming more indebted. The official figures from the National Credit Regulator, the 24 million odd um, credit active consumers out there, 10 million of them are behind on some of their payments. That means that they are defaulting because they cannot keep up with the debt installments that they already have. Mm -hmm. And recent research shows that parents are even taking kids out of private and public schools to online schools, which are cheaper alternatives as part of cost-cutting measures. Mobile Madala, Johannesburg. As expected, but now disappointingly, South Africa's GDP. So now what you just saw, you notice that, um, you understand, um, the people, they are trying to stock up. They are trying to buy in bulk and all that. Guess what? Eventually, there's still going to be, the shelves are going to be empty. That's what's coming. Because now they are realizing that, that it's too expensive to go to the shops and buy food. So they're going to, now they're buying in bulk. So the, the, the supermarkets that are selling things in bulk, they're also going to push up the prices because why? The demand will be high. You understand? So it's a domino effect. And the places like your pick and pay shop right and all that, people are not going to go there no more. And they're also not going to be stocking up because why? Diesel is expensive. Petrol is expensive. The cost of import and export and transport is expensive. So guess what? There's going to, you're going to start to see food shortages in the stores. Understand that? Understand that thing. It's coming. Okay, now watch this. Um, now, before we get there, let me play the next video. Let me play the next video. Now, we're going to go into the South Africa GDP, what's going on now. Um, all right, watch this. 
As expected, but nonetheless disappointingly, South Africa's GDP contracted in the third quarter of this year. And there are a number of issues that have contributed to the lack of growth in the country currently. ENCA Money Desk anchor Ropiwa Mazena is standing by to break down those numbers for us. Ropiwa, so, I, so this was a contraction after a number of terms um, of quarters where we had growth. Mm -hmm. Why? What happened? So in the first and second quarter of this year, we had about 1.2% growth and then 1.1% uh, percent growth around those regions. And that was because we were seeing an economic rebound after those harsh lockdowns were lifted by President Cyril Ramaphosa. Then the third quarter came to us, and you'll remember the country was virtually brought to its knees when we saw that violent unrest where industries across large so he's talking about the he's talking about the the looting that the looting that we just saw which also affected the economy of the country okay part of kzn and gauteng were burnt to ashes essentially and so it was about two weeks of this dire violent unrest and the looting and then subsequently the rebuilding to us has been very difficult uh, for these businesses many of them opting not to open so what happens there to us people lose their jobs and there's no longer any money circulating within the economy whether it be via wages and salaries or via trading and sales mm. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, there's a um, there are consequences to these things, and that's part of the consequences that we are realizing. Break it down for us in terms of sectors. Which sectors uh, were key in terms of the numbers that we are seeing? You see what they are showing there? Look at that. This is logistics, supply chain. Okay. Huge, huge drop in key sectors to less agriculture down 13 points. Agriculture. So that's very important. That's why Bill Gates is buying up farms all over the country. You understand? And all that. Why? Because they know they are the ones that are going to make sure that this famine takes place because the prophecies must be fulfilled as the Lord has told us. Okay. And this is the primary sector, which 13.6%. 13 wow. So the primary sector, quarter on quarter, came down 5.6%. The biggest contributors, agriculture, as I've just mentioned, they're 136 mm -hmm. Mining marginal. So agriculture went down by 13.6%. Okay. Decrease. I mean, we saw that there's been a commodity super cycle in the mining industry. So we haven't seen that much movement when it comes to wages in that particular industry. And then the secondary sector, which comprises of manufacturing, electricity and construction. Mm, manufacturing, electricity and construction not doing too well down three percent electricity quite the contributor albeit marginally but manufacturing to less came down 4.2 percent and we know that manufacturing is one of the biggest employers in the country that has been hampered I just saw earlier on by our export our export numbers went down significantly because our manufacturers couldn't work that was one component electricity and other inhabitants but also the backlog at our ports having a huge impact on that supply chain that we have in the country. Doesn't that talk to what the South Africa Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Program is meant to be about and that other plan uh, that had emanated from <laughs> National Treasury, whose name I really don't know. But I, I assume much of it was incorporated into the SAERRP. Doesn't that talk to it, the whole issue of, um, you know, pipeline industries? If you open the veins and arteries, feed production further down the line, actually you can get this economy moving. So things such as electricity, mm -hmm. uh, water, water, infrastructure, those kinds of things. Doesn't it come back to that? So I guess I'm, I'm asking, are there any ideas really okay. on how to get growth then going? Yeah. So the problem, I, we could have as many ideas that we can have to less, but if the institutions are not able to implement those ideas, that's the big problem. We talk about providing electricity and water. We don't have electricity supply that is sufficient enough, and it's taken so long for IPPs to become part of the grid or to create their own power generation. So that process has been slow. Water issues, we've got water infrastructure that's collapsing and of course the transports the rails the ports there's a monopoly via transnet and only recently the transnet opened up its railways to private sector operators something that should have been done and it's been argued maybe decades ago just to break down the uh, the monopoly so you're asking a question about are there any ideas there are hundreds if not thousands of ideas can you mute your mic
to us. The failing part here is our institutions who are unable to help us implement those ideas. And I suppose when you get these numbers, Rohua, it all comes together as, as part of a puzzle because occasionally we report that Transnet has declared force majeure because of some disturbance, um, I don't know, at Richards Bay or whatever in, mm. in, at the port of Durban. And, you know, or there's been this incident, uh, a cyber attack or something. And we never look at it as part of the bigger picture that then comes up and gets reported uh, in, in, in reports such as these GDP numbers. That's absolutely right. Uh, the supply chain issues are critical to the way in which our growth happens in this country. As I mentioned, one of our biggest sectors, the automotive sector, we rely heavily on exports because our domestic market has virtually been depressed. Even before the pandemic, domestic car sales were not happening, but we were benefiting from automotive parts being exported to our biggest um, our market, which is Europe. And that was inhibited partly because of COVID, but also because of those issues that you've just mentioned at Transnet, cyber attack issues, uh, the force majeures because of fires and the like. Um, and so those issues really inhibit that movement and because they are not resolved at an efficient pace we don't see uh, that movement happening and that filters through into overall GDP growth at least for the third quarter that we're seeing now and goodness knows we need growth right I mean Absolutely. it will be critical to see what happens in the fourth quarter yep. because it will determine then overall what the year looked like absolutely and it's the only way to create jobs growth is the yeah. only way to create jobs to less all right Rupiwa, I can keep talking and talking and talking <laughs> and okay that's it on there so now you also notice the industries that are being affected now manufacturing supply chain okay construction and all that so all of these industries are getting hit why because the most like god is letting us know that guess what the fuel prices the food prices you understand the manufacturing industry power generation industry you know they are all going to be affected guess what this will cause a domino effect in the economy Guess what? Hence the famine. So the famine is caused by multiple factors, not just pestilences, but guess what? It's also caused by what? It's caused by fuel prices going up, which affect the food, which affect the transport. You understand? And the salaries, they remain the same place. That means the cost of living will be too high because why? The amount of money that you have, you're only going to get a few things because things are too expensive. Okay? Get second level 15 verse 12. Second Hazard 15, verse 12. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 12. Go ahead. Egypt shall mourn, mm -hmm. and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. You see that thing? So that plague goes into the sword, the famine, you understand? The war and all that, and great death and, and what? And with beasts of the earth. Read they that till the ground shall mourn. You see that? They that till the ground shall mourn. That goes into the workers. The employee, they are going to mourn. That's why many of our people are complaining what things are too expensive. You understand? Go ahead. For their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hail. You see that? Their seed shall fail through blasting and hail. Who's going to create the blasting and the hail? The white man will create that thing. Will create the instability in the economy. He will do that thing. That's what we went over. Go ahead. And with a fearful constellation. Now look at the atmosphere in the country now. People are scared. They are confused. They don't know what's going to happen next. But the elites of the earth, they know what's going on. Because they are controlling this whole thing. Or so they think. You understand? But watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 65 verse 12. Isaiah 65 verse 12. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 65, verse 12. Mom. Therefore, will I number you to the sword. So the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to number you to the sword. He's talking about Israelites, our, 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 our people. You understand? In the world, that don't want to humble down to what the Bible says. The Lord says, I'm going to number you to the sword. War, death and destruction. Come on. And he shall all bow down to the slaughter. The slaughter. Why? Because why? They don't want to humble down to the laws of God. They're going to bow down to the slaughter. Death, destruction, famine, great sorrows, war. Go ahead. Because when I called, he did not answer. You see that? When I sent the prophets to give you the laws, the solutions to the problems that are existing in our communities affecting our nation, 
because they didn't want to what they didn't want to repent go ahead when i spake he did not hear because how does the lord speak he's the prophet really. but did if but did evil before mine eyes and did choose that way in i delighted not you see what he's saying is this but you did evil before my eyes that's why I go back to second ezra you coming back second ezra chapter 16 second ezra 16 verse 20 watch this second book of ezra chapter 16 verse 20 mm -hmm. but for all the but for all these things they shall not turn from their wickedness you see that thing is this but from all for all these they are not going to turn from their wickedness go ahead no be always mindful of the scourges he says with all of these things going on the famine and on and he says they are still not going to turn from their evil ways they're going to continue doing the evils that they did do they're not going to change their ways that's what the lord is saying right there you understand okay read that again second book of ezra chapter 16 verse 20 mm -hmm. but for all these things they shall not turn from their wickedness mm -hmm. no be always mindful of the scourges they are not going to stop sinning against god that's what he's telling us right here so go back to isaiah okay go back to isaiah chapter 65 um read verse 12 one more again the book of isaiah chapter 65 verse 12 mm -hmm. therefore will i number you to the sword and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter because when i called he did not answer when mm -hmm. i spake he did not hear but did evil before mine eyes and did choose that way in i delighted not he says you chose in the way which i delighted not watch this get revelation chapter 16 okay revelation 16 and verse 10 the book of revelation chapter 16 verse 10 go ahead and and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast mm -hmm, that's, and his that's kingdom the, the, the seat of the beast took about america he saw edom go ahead and his kingdom was full of darkness then and they gnawed their tongues for pain they gnawed they gnawed their their tongues for pain so the darkness goes into the nuclear fallout when the bombs hit you understand it also goes into sin is that they know their tongues for pain okay go ahead I meaning they're going to be going through pain when that when the missiles drop but watch this go ahead and they know their tongues for pain mm -hmm. and blasphemed the god of heaven because of their pains and their sores right and repented not of their deeds you see that they, they still did not stop sinning against god that's what we read in like They still did not stop sinning against the most like God. They continue breaking God's commandment. So go back Isaiah 65 read the state in now watch this. So as we keep in God's commandments we understand the prophecies and all that yes our job is to do what our job is to take heed and believe the things that the Lord is commanding us to do. Read The book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse 18. Read Therefore thus says the Lord God behold my servants shall eat but he shall be hungry you see what the lord is saying so when we as we as long as we hold on to this book we do what it says we prepare it says my servants shall what read that again behold my servants shall eat but he shall be hungry you see what he's saying so our job is to stock up you understand we must we must be able to find bulk and store the food up You understand especially the seed you understand because they lack go ahead behold my servants shall drink but he shall be thirsty you see that because remember it's not just the food that we must store is the water also don't think we we just we're going to be storing seeds you understand and the toiletries and all that no water as well so we need to do research i'll talk to some of you brothers about water storage and all that go ahead Behold my servant shall rejoice but he shall be ashamed why because the lord will have given us the, the, the solution this is what you're supposed to do to prepare yourself so that you don't get plagued by this these evil that will come upon this earth so go back to second ezra chapter 16 one moment then second ezra chapter 16 read verse read verse 34 
Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 34. Mm -hmm. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish, shall perish of famine. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, in the wars, because these wars, they're going to cause shoot, they're going to cause food shortages on this earth. Understand that? You understand? It says, the bridegrooms be, will be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. That's what's coming. You understand? Because what? People are going to lose jobs. Understand that thing. It's already happening. Go ahead. Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. He says, hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. When you open your spiritual ears and hear what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Behold the word of the Lord. Receive mm -hmm. it. Receive it. Believe the word of the Lord. Receive it. Believe this thing. Go ahead. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. The gods is talking about these false gods. The nations, because they push, they push their gods, they push idolatry upon this earth. He says, don't believe those gods because they can what? They cannot speak. They are dumb idols. He says, don't believe them. Read. Behold, the plagues drew nigh and are not slack. The plagues they drew nigh and they are not slack. Jump down to verse 39. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 39. Mm -hmm. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn. You see and that? The world, the world will mourn because of what? The plagues that will not be slack to come upon this earth. Read. And sorrows shall come upon it on every side. And sorrows will come upon it on every side. Read on. Oh, my people. Hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He says, and in those, he says, the Lord says, we must hear the word and get ready for the battle because we are in a war. And he says, in those evils that we read about, he says, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Meaning, be ready to up and leave. That's what he's saying. Be ready to up and leave. Watch this. Jump down to verse Verse 53 now. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 53. Read. Let not the sinner say that he has not sinned. For God shall bend coals of fire upon his head. That's nuclear destruction. We so it says, when he says, let not the sinner say he has not sinned, meaning what? We must examine ourselves and we must repent from the evil that we are doing. Go ahead. Which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. Mm -hmm. Come on. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. The Lord says he knows all the imaginations of men. So our job is to do what, brothers? Our job is to prepare ourselves for what's coming, for what's to come. All the things that are written, they will surely come to pass. We are already seeing our people are confused, they are lost, they are panicking. Guess what? We're not supposed to be panicking because we know what the Lord is saying and we're preparing ourselves for what's to come. Understand that thing. Go back to Matthew. Okay. Matthew 24. Go back to Matthew 24 again. Matthew chapter 24 and verse, verse 6 again. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Right. See that he be not troubled. For all that? these things, but it says, see that ye be not troubled. Don't be troubled by this thing. Go ahead. For all these things must come to pass. Mm -hmm. But the end is not yet. You see what Christ is saying? He says, be see that you are not troubled, you disciples. Why? Because all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Why? Because we have to go through all these troubles first before the end is come. Understand that thing. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Okay. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had subsided, 
This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord with him, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And he that eateth and drinketh with him, eateth and drinketh the nation himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for them. Oh, Amen. 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 Oh,